All right, ladies and gentlemen, hard act to follow here. We're going to be having a panel discussion, and it's called The Distortion of History of World War II. The moderator of this discussion will be Mr. Makovsky. Professor Andrzej Kaminski is not with us, unfortunately. Albert Trujillo is here, founder and president of the Polish-Spanish Historical and Cultural Association, Poland First to Fight, and Stefan Komar is going to join us. He's the son of a Warsaw Uprising insurgent whose battalion, Zoshka, was awarded the Righteous Among Nations Medal for Liberating Genshufka concentration camp in Cap Poland's capital. Stefan Komar has been fighting for years against historical false, historically false and offensive term like Polish death camps, amongst, other, amongst others as a member of the Polish Media Issues Group. Gentlemen. Good morning. Nice to see you. Please. Let me get my book out of And uh, Professor Barrent as well. I'm sorry, is he here? There he is. Okay. And yeah, Pani. Like to invite Professor Barrent as well. And Krystyna Zamorska. Do we have enough chairs? Okay, well, we do. And we have to. It's a short presentation. Yeah, I know. Dzień dobry. Yes, Chris. Mr. Mikovsky, do you want? Do you want to use the mic here, stand up, Russia, maybe? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We don't have uh, a lot of time. We have to end about uh, 10.50. So I'm encouraging you to have a brief uh, but in-depth responses. But let's start uh, from the Alberto Trulio uh, presentation about uh, the distortion of the Polish history through the uh, eyes of someone who's observing very much in detail the Spanish media, uh, because that's how we're supposed to, supposed to start it. And then we're going to have a very brief and but intense discussion about the distortion of Polish history and how to fight it, how to deal with that issue with Professor Grzegorz Berend, Professor Krystyna Zamorska, Stefan Komara, uh, and the first uh, panelists. So the floor is yours. Is the, the presentation loaded? Yeah. Okay, that is the t title of my presentation. Uh, I, first of all, I want to thank the committee for, for inviting me here uh, because uh, I am just really a modest disseminator of Polish history and for me it's a privilege to be here uh, talking to you. I will try to be very, very brief because many things that we have been listening during these very interesting days uh, are the same things that I was intending to, to tell to you. So the way as Poland and the Second World War uh, is seen in, in the Spanish and Portuguese-speaking world is, is fairly similar. What I am going to tell you is not a scientific study, but is the results of years of observation by, by a person very interested in Polish history, uh, of uh, talks and conversation during historical reenactment events, uh, lectures that we have been given in schools, and also in my daily life, because I, I live and work in an environment of co white collar uh, professionals, educated people, and so I can give a, a nice idea of how it is. Okay, let's go to any street in Spain or to a university and begin to ask bypassers about these names. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I went too quickly. I can, I can tell you that almost no one 
will recognize these names. Uh, very few of them will be able to place them in a, in a timeline, and very, very, very few of them will recognize any Polish implication in them. And if they recognize them, uh, it will be very, very roughly and maybe distorted. Oh, let's call these Polish heroes an organization. So, um, besides anyone that appeared in, in, any, in any major movie, no one will, will be known. Jegota. Ask about Jegota. What was Jegota? No idea. Not the stylist clue. So, we are drilling in a deep well of ignorance. Uh, Mr. Koskodan told what he was taught in the school. I think I studied in the same school as he, because uh, we were taught that Poland's contribution to Second World War was to be invited the 1st of September to resist uh, maybe two weeks with the Polish planes uh, destroyed in the, in the ground in the first two hours and the very brave Polish lancers charging uh, heroically and suicidally against the Polish tanks, uh, the German tanks, sorry. So there is a deep well of ignorance that can be easily filled with stereotypes. And these are the major stereotypes we are facing and we find in Spain. So for some people, uh, the Germanophile, because in Spain also there is a big attraction for the dark side, the Poles almost caused the war because they were stubborn. They didn't want to give uh, the, the corridor to Germany, but that was Germany. For many or most of these people, that part of the, of, of course, it depends the, the, which time of the, of the watch of history do you, do you stop. But for them, that was Germany. The Polish Lancers, the very short resistance, of course, nobody knows anything about the, the Soviet invasion. That uh, Poles were very anti-Semitic, so in fact, uh, they were, mo most of them were very happy with what the, the Germans were doing with the, with the, with the Jews. Uh, there is a huge confusion between the Warsaw, the uprisings in, in Warsaw. So there is, a, I think, provokedly by, by academia uh, and by, by many authors that there is a confusion between the uprising of the ghetto of Warsaw and the Warsaw uprising in 1944. The people is, nobody, is not able to distinguish them and most of them, when you talk about the Warsaw uprising, the first question that they do is about the ghetto. So they, they believe that we are talking about the, the ghetto uprising. And of course that the Soviet liberated the country and uh, they could establish a, a communist regime there because the, the Poles were very happy to be uh, liberated by the communists. Okay, we'll try to go, oh, this is the first one. Okay. Also, in history books, the role of Poland is really diminished. Uh, in, in, if you go to, uh, I, I am not talking about academia books, but of general books for the general public, okay? This is an encyclopedia about the Second World War, uh, very popular in Spain nowadays, uh, 400 pages. These are the three times that Poland is mentioned in this encyclopedia. One is regarding the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and, and the invasion in September. The second is about the rebellion in, in, in the Warsaw Ghetto. And the third is, is the Warsaw Uprising. Uh, you see the longest one is about the ghetto. Another problem. If you are interested in history, one of these crazy people that likes to read books, and you are interested in Polish history, you, you need to know languages. That, that are a part of my collection of, of books of, about Polish history. Uh, if you notice something, 90% uh, of them are in English. 
And it is not because I bought them in English because I wanted to improve my English, what I in, indeed need. No, no, it was because it was the only way of being able of reading them. In Spanish, there are no books about, uh, published about, about Poland, his, Polish history. Historical Polish, Polish movies, uh, besides Sky Cutting, that is the only exception, the other ones have to be watched in, in, in English. And they are not released in the major commercial circuits. So these, most of these movies were bought through Amazon or by visiting Warsaw, looking for them in stores in Warsaw. Another problem, another problem we have to, to say that uh, in, in most South America uh, and in Spain, communism is still regard, regarded as a democratic ideology. So something very respectful, respectable, and, and the, com the communists are regarded as fighter, freedom fighters. So you will not believe this, but these posters, well, not, not the T-shirt, but the, the posters are for, are for of, uh, the, police, the promotion of a conference held in a Spanish university and last May, in, in, in October, quite, quite recently. And the, t the title is International Conference in Defense of the Communism, with the poster of the, uh, Joseph Stalin there, and here we have uh, Marx and the guy that, that paid Marx bills, Engels. So in this environment, imagine how the reactionary Polish government in exile or the pre-war Polish government can be depicted. Or what, uh, what these scholars say about the Armia Krajowa that was totally opposed to the, to the communism regime. And the mass media, the, the, the movies, again the same. Hey, Thomas Gross, very popular in Spain with his book and the theatrical play. Uh, series like uh, Son, uh, Unser Foodfather, Unser Mutter, that whitewash the role of the, of the Germans and when present the Polish underground, they present the same themselves as, as almost as anti-Semitic as the real Nazis. Or the Schindler List, who doesn't remember this very nice photogram when they are heading in the train to Auschwitz and they pass through a, a camp in Poland and there are some pe peasants and the Polish girl does, does this gesture to the people in the train. Thank you, Spielberg. And now the mass media, the press. This is how Poland is depicted in the, in the press. Uh, these are some headlines of one of the most read uh, newspapers in Spain, El País. Uh, a newspaper where Gross and Grabowski appear almost every month. Every month. The second one is amazing. Poland rewrites her history in the Second World War. An official institute published a list with the names of 9,000 9, Auschwitz guards, among, among almost all of them were Germans. That creates doubts of, among historians. So, so the Institute Pamięci Narodowe published the list of wars of Auschwitz. Being a German camp, it is surprising that all the wars were Germans. And then they published it that, that Poland is writing her history. This is only the headline because the, the, the text of the article is, a compi is um, almost the thesis, complete thesis of Jan Tegros and Grabowski, all the time talking about how, how evil the Poles were with the Jews. This is, this is Jan, literally Jan Grabowski's. So he published an article in, in this newspaper, and some sentences are terrible because he, he says, sadly, anti-Semitism 
has been always an element, maybe even a constitution one, of the Polish culture. The anti-Semitic feelings were already strong and became stronger during the war. He even says that histories of rescuers are constructions. So stories like the Markova one have been built up in order to clear consciousness. Three million of Polish Jews were, were killed in front of 20 million of her compatriots. To all these articles, associations like, like mine, the Polish embassy, uh, associations of Poles in Spain, uh, wrote letters of protest. None of them were published. We could, we could continue. Uh, I could talk about the influx of Russia propaganda no, nowadays in, in Spain and South America because it's been really strong. So we have many discussions with people that denies the Katyn massacre or justifies it. Uh, people that justifies the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with crazy arguments. We, I don't have time to come into them, but it's really if we can talk later. Uh, and this is a letter written by the, by the Soviet ambassador, uh, so, sorry, the Russian ambassador in, in Spain. And he, he's literally whitewashing the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. It's, it's amazing, reading it, it is like a piece of history fiction and distortion, manipulation, everything and all together. And do you know, this message from Russia is bought both by uh, the leftist uh, nostalgic of Soviet Union and also by the, by the conservative, many conservative people that likes uh, Putin because some of his policies regarding immigration, regarding uh, nationalism in, in Russia, regarding uh, LGTB uh, issues, and most of these people of conservative ideas and anti-communists anti in many aspects uh, buys the Putin's message and do, do, not see, do not see the threat of of, of Russia, and they defend somehow the Soviet Union. Of course, there, there is still some hope, okay? And I just want to thank to the Polish embassy the work that they are doing, some bloggers in Spain that my fellow, my friend Elentir, and some initiatives like the Ministry of Heroes initiative to try to spread a little bit more the, the Polish history in, in my country. And, my language is uh, Hispanic speaking countries. Thank you very much. We're going to have, unfortunately, very short, but I guess very intensive discussion. Let me start from the very basic question, but every, each, every one of you have a different perspective to that question. How from your field of interest, your field of work, your experience, your going to fight and how can you fight with those kind of distortions of the Polish history, of the historical facts uh, from the institutional perspective as Professor Berend to media uh, perspective of, as Mr. Uh, Komar uh, is working on. So let's just answer quickly from my left hand uh, to the last uh, participant how from your personal experience in your field of interest can you fight with those kinds of things that we saw on that presentation? Professor Berndt. Uh, shortly, uh, using uh, means uh, that we possess in institution, on, in different kinds of institution, we, we have to be, we are to be both uh, uh, active and reactive. Active, uh, it means to use all uh, tools uh, available to present uh, the true story of the past, among others about the Second World War and experience of the Polish society during uh, the war with exhibitions, like, uh, uh, books, uh, uh, theater performances, also computer games. 
yes, with using of a true picture of, uh, of the past. On the other way, of course, uh, we uh, face uh, falsification, distortions, lies, even lies. So uh, we are to uh, show what is wrong with the story, the narrative about uh, the past. Uh, we are lucky now to have uh, means, money, institution, manpower to act uh, both ways, just now. Okay, thank you. You have the no. No, yeah, that, yeah. Speak, but okay, I, I am, in, in great extent, I, I, am, uh, I agree with Professor Berend. So uh, all means have to be used and uh, institutional and also uh, educational and, and trying to, to use also the, the more um, popul the popular culture to, to, to approach this, this, pro this problem, so movies, uh, games, but of course, all, all of that requires money. Professor Kristina Zamorska. Thank you. Um, so, uh, from my perspective as a Polish American um, and an academic and an uh, activist, um, I see that um, we went from some of this is mistakes, uh, ignorance, but some of it is intentional activism. And I, um, I, I some, someone like Bra Gra Professor Grabowski, uh, Gross, and this unfortunate and deliberate focus on World War II as Polish-Jewish relations is itself a distortion, because we talk about the genocide uh, without the war. So we, we need to point out in our work, in our writing, in conferences, that the genocide happened in the context of the war. And uh, there's also, so I define people like Grabowski, um, academic activists, and, they, and unfortunately it's common. Uh, intentional um, focus, ethno, it's ethnocentric and biased. Uh, and it should be pointed out and challenged. And I do that in my work. I react, I go to conferences, I, um, I react to faulty um, articles. We pass things around as a group, uh, informing each other. There, uh, and there's also media activism. You know, uh, that famous example we just had was Andrea Mitchell and Secretary Pompeo uh, making not, absurd statements while visiting Poland earlier this year, and we reacted to that. Uh, and I also wrote to our secretary's uh, office and, and pointing out to uh, people and asking them, who are, who are their speech writers, right? So uh, people are trained uh, coming out of school, becoming journalists, be becoming legislative staffers who are uh, coming with false history, which needs to be corrected, needs to be challenged. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm here because of uh, my experience um, basically challenging the, uh, and reacting to uh, statements or texts that are appearing in the, in the press. And um, I've observed, I've, I've had uh, very many close observations of the reactions of the staff, of the newspapers, the editors, and, um, and I've seen where we've been successful, um, and I've seen many patterns uh, of uh, uh, distortions that I think we can already kind of predict, um, and we should be we should already have prepared analysis of these false claims and these false statements, and we should be simply pushing to uh, preemptively challenge all these distortions with the same media that repeatedly uh, do it over and over again. Um, what we are facing is definitely censorship. Um, there is absolutely a, um, a glass ceiling for the Polish voice in this matter. Um, I've bumped my head on it many times. Many people haven't even gotten there. Um, many people who try, they get burned. 
Um, I've, I've um, put a lot of thought into this, and I found that there are some weaknesses in regards to the media, and one of the weaknesses of the media is that it pretends to be credible. It needs, it, that's their image. There's a, who, why would somebody want to read a paper that's not credible? Um, and the, the fact of the matter is that the truth is on our side, and a lot of these things that we're fighting are false. Um, and it, it's, it's really, and then there's the other issue, and this is with academia, their weakness is that they're supposed to be about freedom of speech and debate and coming to the truth by debating things and stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but yet they're engaging in censorship, which is something that they don't want to hear and they don't want anybody around them to see. Um, one of the ways in which we're censored is simply purely we, we, we ask for a letter to be printed, it doesn't get printed. Uh, or we ask for a letter to be printed and then they edit it. So there'll be a long-winded article with numerous, numerous, numerous distortions and somebody in this room sends a letter challenging the, the, the factuality of the distortions and what do they do? They cut it down to three sentences and then they give the author of the article a chance to rebut those three sentences with further distortions. And then that's it, oh no, we, that's it, enough, it's, it's, we're, we're done. What I found very uh, effective is, uh, and, and the, the notion is, is that the people who are doing this, I, I'm not gonna really try to explain, it's not my job to explain why they're doing it. Uh, I just know that they're doing it. Um, I know that they're, for example, one of the funniest things I saw was there was a letter by, Mr. K uh, by the uh, parliamentarian Kavchinsky who was supposed to be here. So he wrote a letter complaining about the fact that uh, some article didn't mention the word Germans uh, in regards to the camps and he was saying that, you know, Nazi, uh, Nazi Germany, Nazi Germans. And then I saw his his letter that he posted, and then I saw what actually appeared in the, I believe it was the Guardian, they actually removed the word German from his letter, complaining about the fact that they're not using the word German, not German. So he would put German Nazis in his letter, and then they removed German, and then when you call them, they go, well, everyone knows who the Nazis were. Not um, everyone knows, like, like let's uh, so, finish a little bit here, so, because we, we mm -hmm. don't have an, enough time to, those to, 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 to have a follow-up for this very interesting uh, notion, but I would like to also ask another question practical, and also one question for each every one of you, because I don't want to be uh, asking individual questions, of course, because of the lack of the time, but the issue is very stressing, very important, and we can refer to that, each every one of us personally. The Netflix, uh, the biggest streaming company in the world, recently released the movie The Devil Next Door, the documentary movie uh, about uh, this kind of Ukrainian death camps in uh, Treblinka, the guard of, 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 uh, of the Treblinka that was uh, moving to United States, then he lived here and he had a huge process in Jerusalem, but in this movie, the Polish uh, map during the Second World War was presented as uh, after the war uh, with the borders and that camps in, uh, in, in, in our country as it was quasi uh, um, democratic or some kind of independent, uh, like after the war the war regime, um, how would you fight with this kind of situation? Because Polish government was involved, Polish internal, internals were involved, journalists, but from your perspective, how would you fight this kind of specific issue? Because we are, I would like to speak about the specific issues. So, uh, shortly, uh, what we are talking, what we are presenting must be correct. It is uh, the main uh, principle. We are not able to avoid such situation because it happens that people are stupid or are, are doing uh, uh, intentionally wrong, as you, as Professor Zamorska uh, mentioned. And here we can only react on such situation, and there was such a reaction to a uh, present time uh, map of uh, Poland. 
On the other hand, I would like, uh, I have to uh, add something to this uh, question and to the previous question. Uh, so we also should not hesitate to ask ourselves difficult question to be prepared for difficult questions. Because, for example, uh, soldiers of the national movement were fighting for independence of Poland before the first, uh, Second World War, during the whole Second World War. But uh, we must also answer such a question, why there was no institution of national movement in Zagota? Because such a question is asked, and we must look for an answer, for an explanation, to prepare for discussions. And we must not leave a space uh, not overworked by us. It is our duty also. Thank you. OK. As I have been the one that has been talking longest, I will, be, I will do the shortest uh, reply. Uh, next, net, uh, and it won't, maybe, it will be considered politically, politically not, very, uh, not very correct, but Netflix is, a, and companies like Netflix, that maybe they are doing it by ignorance, I don't think so, I am not so naive uh, when do these things, they only react to one thing, the pocket and the business. They are a private companies. So um, what, what more can, can I say? So if, uh, for instance, I do not pay for Netflix. I am not interested in the product that they can show me and they, they, cannot, they can sell me. So if I don't like what they are doing, I simply stop paying. So the boycott is your uh, answer. Yes. Um, sh short answer to um, the film. Uh, the response from the gov Polish government was important because I heard about it here. My brother uh, told me, oh, did you hear about that? So that, that got reproduced in the media, and that's very important. Um, as far as um, proactively, I, I just want to comment th um, that we can all build uh, base of knowledge by using our communities, our libraries. I sneak in Pol history of World War II into my syllabi in literature. I teach Eva Hoffman, who was mentioned here. She wrote a great biography, Lost in Translation. She ended up leaving. She was a child immigrant uh, of Jewish heritage. Who, uh, her mother was pregnant with her in 45. She grew up in Krakow and later moved to Canada, and she became an editor of New York Times, and she was c culturally Polish. Uh, she was so distressed by not being the right, right kind of Jewish in America that she moved to London. And um, her kind of books should be um, um, promoted and read. Let's go to our libraries. We'll prepare a list, I have a list, we'll put it on a website, of the books that Americans uh, or people in our communities should be reading that are informative, uh, have discussion groups uh, in our communities. So it should be reacted to on every level. And um, Professor Kaminski, who's not here today, he's doing a wonderful project on the level of the academia. He's doing proactive uh, set, um, editing of books. He's been doing this in Poland for years, and now he's being supported by the Fundacja Narodowa. It's called Recovering Forgotten History, and scripts of books are being distributed among uh, academics uh, uh, who are uh, preparing to publish. They get together, they, they, get, get, they read the scripts, they get together for two weeks uh, every summer, and they critique and share. So stupidity doesn't get published, an intentional bias doesn't get into books. And those kinds of projects on every level are needed, because we have to catch up. There are two tracks that we are dealing with. One, Poland and its history got left behind. In the meantime, people are spe have been speaking about us uh, in an incorrect way, in, and in a way that's ethnocentric and biased, and we need to address the errors and the entrenched bias that's in the historical narrative.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stefan Komar. Right. How would you respond to that? All right. Basically, what I didn't get to finish um, was that um, being that there are these weaknesses, um, we need to get our voice heard. People need to hear all the things that were said today. And, on, and to do that, we have to overcome the censorship. The way we overcome the censorship is by reaching out to public opinion in every which way possible that we can. Thank God we have social media now, but now there are attempts now to silence people in social media. Now the reason is people, in my opinion, who don't like what we have to say, which should not be offensive to anybody, um, don't want this to be heard, and we need to overcome that. Um, and we need to work together and do a little bit more and do it preemptively and do it systematically and not just in reaction. Because this has been going on for too long and we need historians from Poland to be available to us, uh, to be able to actually be able to present the facts. Uh, they need to be able to present the facts. They need to be coming here more often. Um, uh, you know, I went to, uh, there's so many projects, but we have to do something. So I'm going to just mention one thing. So I went to the library one day and I took a book about uh, World War II history slash the Holocaust. And then in it, it says um, Hitler didn't put the concentration, and this is a book that's addressed to, to students, like probably maybe, you know, middle, middle school or even maybe upper elementary school. And it says Hitler put the camps the concentration camps in Poland because he knew the Germans would not, would oppose them. But the Poles, due to their history of anti-Semitism, would not object, all right? So this is out there. How many more books are out there? Are we gonna do a campaign to now go into every library? There is supposedly an organization that's doing that. It can be done, you know, to a, to a certain extent but it, it does require a little bit of money, maybe to at least help the volunteers who are willing to do that. There's people willing to do that, but they have other things to do. They have bills to pay, stuff like that. But, I mean, this is one project that could be done. This book is in there for I don't know how many years. And believe it or not, there was a, it was word for word. There was a big uproar a few years prior to me discovering this book. In the New Jersey Board of Education website, some student made, wrote an essay, and he a actually had that word for word. <coughs> and there was a big uproar. How dare the uh, New Jersey Board of Education uh, you know, put this on their website? Well, they, somebody was supposed to look into it from, and I don't want to like, blame anybody, from the uh, consulate. Um, I don't think they did anything about it, because they, they never found that textbook where that kid got it from. More, more than likely got it because it was word for word. Um, now, and I'm not going to blame the, the consulate, all right? If they're going to be involved in this stuff, they have to have people who are, that's all they do. That's all they do. They just deal with this issue because it's a, it's a pressing issue. It's important. And they should be uh, committing uh, the time, the energy, and the funding to do this in a respectful manner, not to push, uh, to, 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 to uphold the good name of Poland, which I don't think that, that, we, that, that, that slogan should have ever been used. It's not, that's not the issue. The issue is to, to reach the truth, not, uh, because if you say, oh, I wanna uphold the good name of Poland, that could also mean, well, we're gonna hide the bad stuff, and that's what, how it's being taken, and that's how it's being criticized. Quite, quite, uh, and, and I, I get that, you know, but we, we opened ourselves with these uh, slogans instead of just saying, no, we want to see the truth. Yeah. We need to be able to present the truth and we have to be able to discuss what we, our observations, our, uh, you know, what we've experienced, what we've heard, and be able to do it without being uh, labeled uh, and shouted down and censored. Um, but we, you know, we need to coordinate with Poland with, with the historians who are going to actually respond to us 
or, or you know, get out there themselves and start talking. Thank you very much. I, I, yeah, I, I just would like to say this. I would love to be able to continue this panel discussion, but the fact is that I've been told that we are, uh, there's another organization picking up this room. So Mr. Shlebovsky, wherever you are, um, could you please come and make your final statements? Uh, thank the panel. I know, obviously, not enough time to cover this very deep issue. Let's give him a hand. And uh, Mr. Marek and Mr. Slavovsky, please come to the podium. And uh, thank you very much for this wonderful two and a half days. Yes. It looks like we have to interrupt in a very important, uh, very important, on a very important subject. And, Obviously, it, we, have, we are just scratching the surface of the problem, but unfortunately, that's, uh, that's the time constraints which we have. Um, so, uh, I just want to announce two things. First, uh, I want to remind you that uh, today we have uh, all participants of our conference are invited to the premiere, world premiere of the uh, opera, uh, Tri Paderewskis, which, are, which is going to take place at the uh, uh, John F. Kennedy uh, Center here in Washington. So if anybody is having plans to do that, please come to me. I will inform you how to get, uh, how to get there and get tickets. Um, second announcement is um, um, basically, basically I would like to, uh, to thank you, uh, to thank those of us who are working with the committee um, I haven't mentioned yesterday Kristina Zamorska, who was uh, with us uh, for last half a year working on this conference, and also Mr. Uh, Arthur, uh, uh, who came from us, uh, Mr. Arthur Zisk, who came to us from London. Uh, um, he was he was not visible, but he, he is the author of the website and he was working along with us. Without his uh, uh, participation and contribution, uh, nothing would be possible. Um, Arthur, maybe you can come up here and show your face. Uh, why not? You see, he's, he's always very busy. You see, this, this, kind, this kind of unpretentious uh, but very dedicated people are making these things possible. Um, I would like uh, to our uh, chairman, uh, Marek Bozejak, to say a few words at the end. We don't have much time left, so I would like to thank you again for joining us here at the National Press Club. I hope that uh, this first project of the iPoland group will serve as a starting point for future projects. I'd like to mention, for instance, that uh, we would like to work on a project uh, which will focus on the recognition of the former US ambassador to Poland, Arthur Bliss Lane, uh, between 44 and 47. Uh, he resigned from his post after allies betrayed Poland, allowed the uh, elections to be falsified, and uh, he fought for Poland uh, being in the United States. He was ambassador of Poland in the United States, fighting for the truth of Katyn. Uh, he was crucial in, in the creation of the Madden Commission in the um, House of the Representatives, so this person um, really deserves recognition. Uh, we prepared a petition to the office of the Polish president to award this person, but we have also other projects uh, uh, which uh, have to do with, uh, with Bliss Line. We'll also think about other projects. You are all invited uh, to support IDAS. C please come to us, send us your feedback. Maybe we'll uh, have a possibility to cooperate together in the future, be it film production, be it a publication, or another conference, another event. Uh, a very important subject is the um, historical narrative in computer games. Uh, I liked very much the presentation of uh, Mr. Makovsky. I hope you like it too. So uh, perhaps you will organize another conference on this subject. Uh, but there are also other topics of interest. So if you have any ideas, please come to us. Thank you again very much. This concludes our conference. Thank you for your participation.